Hi Gemini, this is your July 2020 tarot forecast. Guys, it's July. That's crazy. The year is more than halfway through. I hope everyone's feeling okay. It's been a crazy world wide so far, right guys? What a wild ride. So Gemini, I hope you enjoyed your June forecast. This is for the month of July. Let's get into it. Messages for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for July. Look at this. Look at that gorgeous card just flipping right over as I'm shuffling that gorgeous Ace of Cups. You could have a new love, a new love interest, a new loving awareness. There could be compassion and sensitivity that's very, very important to you. Ooh. And flipped up with it, Gemini is the chariot. And chariot is ruled by Cancer or fourth house energy. There could be mother, the home, could be some short-term travel. There could be some car or uh, house issues or themes. Um, you could be buying a new home. You could have an interest in a new home or a new person. Or a cancer individual or um, sensitive water sign individual could have appealed to your, I don't know, sense of fairness, sense of joy. Let's see if those cards show up in your reading, guys. So Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for July 2020. All right, guys. So we're going to do a Celtic cross as usual. I was using a second deck to qualify the first um, layer, and I will do that. I'm happy to do that for your private readings. However, for just a short 20-minute video, I found... I was rushing through it and it took up a lot of extra time, so just one layer today. But if there's anything, <laughs> like I'll probably qualify this, um, if there's anything that's sort of outstanding that needs more information here, I'm going to qualify it with a card out of this deck. So let's get your cards out for you. Lots of interesting majors for you. Very interesting, Gemini. It's nice to see that full card there. Let's move these over just a tiny, tiny bit. I think you can still see them there. Yes. And move these over a little bit. Wow, and you're finishing. <laughs> okay, so I just want to be, I want to um, dive into, I guess, the overall nature of the reading today for you. And I would suggest here that it's going to be some changes right at the beginning of the month here for you, perhaps sudden, perhaps unexpected. There's going to be some communication that could feel tricky by the third week of the month here, but you know, whether that's internally something going on in your own mind or something that you're communicating with someone else, maybe just some more research or more data that you need. Certainly by the fourth week of the month here, uh, Gemini, in the end of July, it looks like you're just ready and willing to head out into a brand new direction. And this could be a very exciting Seven of Swords here in the position on how others see you. You could just be willing to take a step into the unknown, to do something different, um, forge a path of your own, follow your soul's purpose. We did have that Ace of Cups and that Chariot card jumping out for you. So Gemini, you could even have a Cancer, strong Cancer influence in your own chart. If that's the case, check out your Cancer reading as well as your Gemini reading. But really exciting energy. Bottom of the deck energy here is the seven. We have two sevens here, so you could have some revision, realignment, or re-editing um, to that's going to concern you, or that could be a part of your uh, month's journey here. I do treat the bottom of the deck energy. We're here looking at the seven of pentacles as sort of the basket that the reading is sitting in. So, you know, what is underlying all of this? What is, you know, the theme, for example, of the month for you? And it's the seven of pentacles. So again, we're looking at some revision energy here. You'll see he's pretty comfortable. You know, he's got a nice shirt. He's surrounded in sort of a gold aura. But basically what this card is suggesting here is that you're examining your current position, you're examining how far you've come, where you're going, and what you want to take with you. And that's kind of, we, and we can see this here with your recent history being the tower, um, whether or not you tore something down of your own accord or it was torn down for you, I do feel really confidently here that it's something that's going to propel you in a really positive direction. 
So don't be dismayed by the tower card here. We'll get into that in detail in a moment anyway. But, you know, really nice energy. You're given an opportunity here, guys, to revisit perhaps something that you, whether it's a person, place, thing, right? All pentacles, in my estimation, are nouns. So people, places, or things when we're looking at pentacle energy. And this is just giving you um, an opportunity, right? And we see another one here. There's another seven over here. But the seven with the pentacles is like, you know, what do you want to leave behind? What do you want to bring forward? There could be health, work, service, could be avenues um, or energies that are being felt here. Also, of course, money, assets, and investments. And certainly, when I say health, I mean like, you know, your physical health, the health of relationships, whatever that is for you when you hear the word health. This is a general reading, right? So this is for all Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. You can get a personal reading for a specific question. Um, but these readings do resonate with most individuals. If you find they're not, check out your Cancer, a Cancer reading for the July uh, time period, just because there's a lot of Cancer influence here. Or check out your Moon and Rising signs. So guys, right at the beginning of the month for you. So the situation and what's crossing that is uh, temperance and then it's crossed by the Eight of Pentacles. So again, more Pentacle energy. We went from the Seven all the way up to the Eight. And this is Apprentice energy. Very likely this has to do with what you have been physically working on toward investing in, accumulating, this type of thing, right? And when we're looking at the strongest card, the major arcana being temperance, the author of this deck calls it patience. It's just as likely <laughs> that you'll need to exert temperance or patience at this time over an issue that perhaps it's immovable. Perhaps there's just something you can't take to the next level or you have to wait on someone. You could be waiting on a green light here, on some feedback on um, an assessment on some property, but nonetheless, you're waiting on something that you've already worked on, you've already put in some time and energy and effort. Again, this could be a real, anything from a relationship to a business plan to a health issue, right? Um, but temperance is really nice here because temperance is giving you an opportunity. It's alchemical. There is something working behind the scenes, right? There's something that's generating behind the scenes because of what you've already worked on, because of what you've already invested. So definitely don't go throwing out the baby with the bathwater here. I don't see really any need for you to throw something out altogether anyway. We're going to get to this in a moment, but I do feel confidently with the tower in your recent past, something is already going to have been removed anyway. Like I said, either you removed this or something was sort of removed from this environment. So you're not going to have to do too much work to get rid of something that felt like perhaps it wasn't built to last or it was collapsing anyway. Um, but we'll look at that more in just a moment. Here we have really beautiful pentacle energy at your foundation. Nothing better than seeing strong pentacle energy at your foundation. So boom, boom, boom. Three pentacle energies, really strong by the way, seven, eight, and ten. So a legacy issue could be very important to you here. Family, including children, grandchildren, grandparents. Something that's important to you. Again, this could be work and service, right? This could be... Um, investment now investment in your work investment in um a plan of action a person a place a thing right um but also practical things like a home we mentioned this at the very beginning with that ace and that chariot could be a house could be a car um but ultimately this is gener um uh what am i trying to say when you have generational <laughs> generational um, influence, generational money. This is, um, you know, inheritances and, and heirlooms and this type of thing. So you're definitely coming from this place and it could just be Gemini that, you know, we're all placed in this position where we're suddenly having to, or we're suddenly, um, I guess forced in, in some manner to look at how far we've come and look at, you know, what can we do without, what do we need, um, where are we willing to make changes? Where are we? Where is our foot put down and we're not going to budge? So I think this is really just sort of speaking to that as well. Like, what are you willing to part with? What are you and what do you need to take with you into this glorious future? Because I'm excited for the last week of the month for you. 
on a stunning energy it makes me stutter um, so yeah don't be afraid of this process either this is really important um, as a process to get through to get rid of what you don't want to say you know what I don't want to play this game anymore or you know uh, let the chips fall while they may I'm willing to take a risk here because it's something I've worked on and uh, you could be dealing with an Aries individual because we have a lot of Mars energy enveloping or bookcasing right Mars energy on both ends of the situation for you, being temperance and the Eight of Pentacles. So you, you could be dealing with an Aries individual. You could also be dealing with a Scorpio individual. I'm throwing that out there as well. No, I'm not seeing the Death card, but we both know that um, Mars is co-ruled by Scorpio, um, which also uh, has Pluto as a co-ruler. So I do want to throw that out there as well because Aries is ruled by fire, and Aries, um, because of the element fire, is transformative. It transforms by fire. And, but curiously enough, right, with the co influence of Mars over Scorpio, it is also very transformative. But Scorpio is a water sign, so there could be a more emotional element to this major transformation for you. I just want to lay that groundwork for you. Uh, while we address the tower here in our recent past, right? So this is Mars energy. A lot of destruction is going on here. But again, how can you get, you know, it's like it's like the omelet. This is a terrible analogy, but I mean, how do you get the omelet without breaking the egg type thing? How do you get to the root of something? How do you crack? How do you have something grow? How does the flower grow or the vegetable grow if the seed doesn't crack open? So this could be um, a really important emotional and even financial, possibly even um, a legacy issue, a big awakening for you guys. And, and you know, uh, the tower, I mean, people often, you know, they're dismayed, right? They don't like the tower because sudden changes but this could very well work in your favor. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can actually get rid of a foundation or something that you've been counting on or relying on or even just used to and taking for granted. And it says, oh no, <laughs> you can't do that. And this is sort of what it's just suggesting here. And you're definitely landing on your feet because we have crowning you the nine of wands. And this is your spirit. This is your what your exertive energy, what you're exerting, what you're employing, how you're actually behaving. And this is a lot of self-resolve. <laughs> this is a lot of self-initiation and self-satisfaction. This is independent um, um, effort. This is a lot of effort and, and you're really going for it. You're interested in a long-term project, interested in a legacy issue. Um, perhaps even children could be a part of um, the concern for you this month, even if you are the child. Perhaps it is about your parents and grandparents, but these two together are interesting. Nine of Wands um, crowning the Ten of Pentacles as the foundation. So something along this line around a, a legacy tradition um, is just going to feel like a little bit of extra work, I would say, by, um, by say, the second week. Here, we're kind of getting into the late second, third week before we get to the third week here. And here's where we're looking at our Aries ruled emperor. Um, this is a lot of masculine energy. It's also considered in terms of the major arcana influence, it's like the father energy. Of course, the empress precedes this, and that's like goddess energy. This would be like, you know, your sense of godliness, your sense of, you know, you're in charge, you're in control. You could be the boss. You could be changing positions at a boss. You could be getting a new boss. You could be becoming the boss. Um, but there could be major upheavals around um, a parent, a father, a boss, Someone who's in charge, um, someone who's in authority, someone who has the answers, someone who is a disciplinarian, that type of thing here. Let's slide into these very interesting, you'll see, right, the only swords cards you have in the third week. So somehow around the third week of the month, Gemini, you're going to have something to come to terms with, with relation to um, ideas, thinking, thinking, concepts, and possibly even communication 
and even a direction, even if it's an unusual direction that you could be taking here. And I'm going to pull some more cards to get to the root of one of these two cards here because there's just a lot of questions that I have about these cards and we'll look at them in detail in a moment. Uh, page of Swords here in how you see yourself. So you see yourself as someone who's really fighting for the truth. You, you are facts orientated, you are evidence orientated, you are data orientated, but something's missing here. Either you're relying on outdated information or someone is not feeding you um, say accurate information and I'm not calling someone a liar although we are dealing with the card of a gambler here but maybe outside of calling people names and 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 um, you know assuming the worst here we're just gonna look at evidence this is a card that is interested in communicating evidence but more evidence more data more research is necessary also this can be construed as the spy card someone may be spying on you, you may be spying on them, there could be a spy in the midst, there could be a, you could just need to spy more information, you could just need to look harder, you could just need to look harder at something that's going on here. Here in the position of how um, others see you, so this is how you see yourself, how others see you is someone who is a little bit tricky, a little bit trickster, a gambler, someone who's willing to go off into a direction of their own, to take possibly even calculated risks. Um, but there is trickster energy here. So it could just be that there's a dispute here and you have to go off into your own direction. The reason why I see this working very well for you and I'm not overly concerned with these two in the in these positions is strictly because of this and then the uh, the um, advice card. We're looking at the fool here and your hopes and dreams, right? So your hopes and dreams is that your soul has a new purpose. Your soul is moving in a direction that speaks to you. You don't have to align yourself with anything. You don't have to, you know, truth is king, right? So it kind of doesn't matter beyond that who's saying it or even in, who is in control of it. Like as long as you know what's in your heart of hearts and what you really want and the direction you want to take, that is the most important thing. And that's your hopes and fears. That's your hopes and wishes or fears. So Please follow your heart and follow your highest instincts here, guys, because your advice card is the magician. And the magician in, ensures that you have all four aces in your hands. And we saw that gorgeous ace of cups at the beginning, guys. So remember, you have all the aces, pentacles, swords, wands, and cups. That means all of your elemental bases are covered. And you really have the power. Ultimately, the power is yours. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to get one card to qualify these before we get your um, final oracle cards to polish off your reading, okay? Let me look at the seven. I'm more interested in the seven because this just, this is where the question is for me. So how, why is the seven of swords in the position of how other people see Gemini? Qualify the seven of swords for how other people see Gemini. Qualify the seven of swords for how other people see Gemini in July. jump and sometimes they just take forever. Give me a second here. Alright guys, I'm going to cut the deck because I'm sadly, wickedly out of time. Let me see. So it's because you're emotionally walking away from something. So someone just may not be on your level. Someone may just simply not understand you. You're just not understanding someone. Someone's not on your level and you're emotionally freeing yourself from this instead of arguing about it anymore. So congratulations. <laughs> um, it just seems as though you're doing you and you're not making any, you don't need to explain to anybody. 
And that might even be a first for you, or that might just be a good feeling for you. But it is nice to see the Eight of Cups qualifying the Seven of Swords because you know in your heart of hearts it's time to walk away from something. So this is more of a calculated risk or a calculated gamble in the direction of your dreams. Like your like fondest dreams. Like like when we whenever you see the fool guys, you're looking at you know, soul purpose stuff, right? Like truly being yourself, truly listening to your inner voice, truly following um, your own heart and, and, and the rhythm, uh, you know, walking to the beat, marching to the beat of your own drum. So this could be a very liberating, very liberating month for you, Gemini. I'm actually super excited for you. Especially, you know, an advice card magician, like, no big deal, right? Just, oh yeah, you have all the power, the world is yours, go ahead. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, let's see if I can get one jumping out of here. Take that one. And one of more. You know, you can't help but really express to be proud of yourself too. Like, be proud of yourself for getting through a really difficult period. Because God knows it wasn't just world events. God knows everyone's got something to overcome no matter what else is going on in the world. So, you know, give yourself a little pat on the back because you're definitely overcoming something and coming through by being true to yourself. And, and there's not much more important things in the world than that, Gemini. I'm not kidding. Be, to thine own self be true, friends, okay? So divine timing and uh, surrender and release. Divine timing is absolutely gorgeous. As I said, I feel so confident here that specifically by the fourth week in particular, something is just going to come through. Something that feels like it was just a lot of effort and maybe wasn't going to happen and maybe got changed last minute and, you know, that type of thing. I just feel really strongly that, you know, if you surrender the need to control and you release all fears, you're really going to make room for that divine timing, for that you know, maybe even divine intervention here, guys. Poised is so gorgeous because I really see you really confident and strong. There's a lot of core stability here, guys. A lot of core stability. We have eights. We have... Uh, tens, we have nines, we have a lot of majors, very confident majors. So, you know, you, you got this. You got this. Don't fret, don't fear, don't delay. <laughs> Mountain lion is leadership. Leadership is really important to you. And like I said, it could be you being putting in, in a position of leadership or a role of authority here. Um, that could be quite sudden. Um, but somebody thinks you are suitable for leadership and it could be you or you could be stepping up to that plate. And also guys, keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Well then. So if this is a love reading for you, um, it could be that you're just being introduced to and communicating with someone who sees something a little bit differently. Maybe that was the whole thing here and you just decided it wasn't your cup of tea. Um, but this doesn't have to be about romance. Whatever it is, keep an open mind, guys. Um, but not so open that, so that your brains fall out. So I hope you enjoyed your reading. Always a pleasure to read for you. And I'll see you in the next one for your sign. Bye for now.